Kuhn is a 13-year-old with AIDS. He got the disease from a very expensive medication made from blood. So did thousands of other hemophiliacs. And their families are all going broke trying to keep them from, on the one hand, bleeding to death, and on the other, dying of AIDS. His AIDS expenses alone, um, I'd say somewhere between forty-five and fifty thousand dollars. This just this last month. I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Orly Safer. I'm Ed Bradley. I'm Steve Croft. I'm Leslie Stahl. Those stories in the market that would keep your child alive turned out to be contaminated with the HIV virus and that your child had AIDS or was likely to get it. Now add to that that the product in question could cost as much as $200,000 a year and there's no way you can afford it. That's exactly the situation facing thousands of families of hemophiliacs who were put on this product to stop their bleeding before anyone realized that the blood supply in this country wasn't safe. Why is this product so expensive? It's so expensive because to be effective as a clotting factor, and that's what it's called, clotting factor, it has to be distilled from the blood of 20,000 donors. That's also why it wreaks such havoc among hemophiliacs. Clotting factor first came on the market in the late 1960s when people were unaware of AIDS and the blood supply wasn't as carefully screened as it is now. But the cost of doing just that today, cleaning it up, has made this one of the most expensive items in health care. Virtually no one can afford it. And when you add the cost of AIDS, what you're getting is financial ruin for thousands of Americans. Take the Coons family. 13-year-old Michael Coons is one of the hemophiliacs who got AIDS from the clotting factor. When he was three years old, he had his tonsils out and needed infusions of the clotting factor. Unfortunately, this was in 1982, before the blood supply had been cleaned up. Can we have you lie down here? Don't step on your brother. Right now, he feels all right much of the time. Did you compete against him? Who wins? Me. But increasingly, there have been more and more stays in the hospital. Over the last five years, the medical bills have been overwhelming. His parents, Carolyn and Michael Coons. His AIDS expenses alone, um, I'd say somewhere between forty-five and fifty thousand dollars. This just this last month. One month for Michael. Yes. Yep. Can you take a listen. As if the cost of AIDS were not bad enough. Michael's expenses as a hemophiliac are hitting this family with a whole separate set of bills. When he had surgery in April 1992, his bill for the clotting factor alone came to over $20,000. One of these little bottles that costs $1,000. This is... Show us one of the... Can you show us the yeah. bottle? Yeah. One bottle. Yeah, it costs $1,000 for the treatment. That costs $1,000. And yeah. how many... What is it, a shot? It's well, an infusion, yeah, yes. It's an infusion. He, he was on this for 10 days, and he had to have it twice a day. Twice a day at $1,000 for each one. Right. So that's $2,000 a day just for this. Right. The Coons family has been paying bills like this for the last five years, and almost every month, even with her husband's insurance, the balance unpaid keeps getting higher and higher. Just last April, Carolyn herself qualified for insurance at her full-time job. But even with that, they are barely making a dent in the old bills. I'm just going to give these guys half, because that's what I can, uh, I can afford to give them this month. Okay. No. They've sometimes had to get help to pay the mortgage, and their church has helped out with food. We're still paying off old bills from five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. We have old bills and outstanding bills and new bills and incoming bills. I mean, the impact of that was just astronomical on our family just you know we took out a seven thousand dollar loan we consolidated just to pay off medical because we had all these bills like 20 30 coming in the mail every month and they get overwhelming and then we still had our second mortgage that we took out to pay off medical bills also and you know we're still paying on that carolyn coons feels that she should not be working she should be at home with her children while they need her at this time but she has no choice because she needs the health insurance to stay afloat. Her husband's insurance won't cover all the expenses. And when she applied for government assistance, she was told no. There is nothing available for middle class because I have applied for 
just about everything that you could apply for. And I said, all I need is just to help with the medical. I don't want money. I just need help with our medical. And they just wrote down on a piece of paper that AIDS was not a medical emergency. And I felt, I felt like I was just being laughed at, and I just walked out of there in tears. I thought, this is our system. This isn't really working, you know? Bankruptcy has certainly reared its head once or twice. Well, we, not we once or twice, that. a lot of times. Here at the University of Pennsylvania Law School, a recent study was done of people who filed for bankruptcy, and the university was surprised at the result. Professor Elizabeth Warren headed the study. One of the things we found was that medical debt is the single most frequently listed debt for those who go into bankruptcy. More than half of all the people who filed for bankruptcy in the United States in our study had some sort of medical debt. If you went bankrupt, how, how would you pay the medical bills? Well, we've got an attorney friend that talked to us about that, and his comment was, you wait until after Michael dies when all of these expenses are, are huge, then you go under. Um, in the meantime, he says you just do the best that you can. As if the heartache of Michael's condition and the financial burden weren't hard enough, other parents in similar circumstances are telling the Coonses that the best way to make it is to go on welfare. But to do that, Michael and Carolyn would have to get a divorce, something they have actually given serious thought to. If we separated legally or, or divorced, we would be eligible for everything. If Michael would be eligible for benefits, I mean, he would be eligible for Medicaid, he would be eligible for SSI, SSD. You know, it would just be... Wait a minute, you're saying that if you two split up yes. as a family, yes. and you, the father, were no longer in the home, mm -hmm. then none of this would be a problem. Right. That's right. And it's been done. I've, I got the idea because I was talking to a couple other people. You mean you? there are families who actually split up in order to get the, the insurance money from Medicaid? Yes. They have no other choice. It's they have either no other choice. Or, or they don't get to care for their child. That's right. Here's one woman who's done just what Carolyn and Michael have only been talking about doing. Her daughter is also suffering from AIDS from contaminated blood. She and her husband divorced so that her daughter would qualify for Medicaid and government assistance. There's a reason she can't show her face. Well, what do you do? You're, you're now, at this point, legally divorced, and you're told you can't live together. What do you do? I told them I lived with my mother. Do you? No. Who do you live with? I live with my ex-husband and my daughter. And you? And me. Lie? Yes. What do you tell your daughter? If anybody ever asks you, you have to say, we live with your grandmother. If the authorities find out, if Social Security finds out, if the Food Stamp Administration finds out that you are still living with your ex-husband, what will they do? They'll take away all my benefits and I'll live on the streets. Larky Deneff is on welfare, even though he has a master's degree. He's on welfare because he's a severe hemophiliac with AIDS. His partner, Beth Weinstein, caught the virus from him, but she has had no health problems so far. This couple would like to be married, but it would jeopardize his medical benefits, so they can't. Deneff lives on welfare because the cost of the clotting factor alone is around $200,000 a year. On top of this, the cost of treating AIDS is $50,000. Even if he were working, which he would rather be doing, most private insurance policies have a maximum lifetime benefit of $1 million, which he would reach very quickly. But you don't earn any money Correct. because, is it because of AIDS, or is it because if you went to work, you wouldn't get the Medicare and the Medicaid? Any month that I earn over $90, they cut off the SSI, and that means the state of Oregon cuts off the Medicaid. We talked about getting married. We very much wanted to be married, mm -hmm. and we're not. Now, why can't you get married? Well, we could get married, but Beth would have to shed her, herself of the modest annuity from her father, her home, her car, give up earning money for a career. If you got married? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the state Medicaid guidelines in Oregon look at your assets, and they only allow you to earn up to 54% of the poverty level. 
We would have to live at half the poverty level. I'm not willing to do that. So you earn money? I earn money. Do you live together? He rents a room in my house. Right now, Deneff must take his dose of clotting factor 10 to 15 times a month to enable his blood to clot in a normal way. The factor he's taking now is, of course, free of the HIV virus. But in 1982, when he became infected, the blood was still dirty. When you got HIV, mm -hmm. did the blood companies and did the Red Cross know that the blood supply was tainted? I believe that they knew in 1982 that there was a problem because we had seen three hemophiliacs who had developed full AIDS. How many hemophiliacs do you know personally who got AIDS? I know about 200 to 250 hemophiliacs and I know about five or ten that didn't get infected. But wait a minute, we're talking about a 90 percent plus of every hemophiliac who took this factor between when and when? Mm, between the early 70s and uh, the early 80s. Got AIDS? This is a, a generation wiped out. And it's a generation wiped out by the very thing that gave us life and normality. It's very ironic. That's part of why it's been so hard to change things in the hemophilia community is nobody wanted to believe that this thing was transmitting HIV. They, they were denying it themselves for so long. I found incredible rejection from the leadership, from other hemophiliacs, from the doctors. Nobody wanted to admit it or talk about it. They said this was a gay disease, it's not going to affect us, and who wants to be associated with the gay community, and uh, the IV drug abusing community was their message. Like, I got support from nowhere except the gay community. The gay community taught me how to survive HIV disease, and I don't think I'd be here today unless I had reached out to them and built a bridge. I mean, it's just, it's the most frustrating story you, you could ever tell. It is. I think that it's very frustrating, and I feel that it, the, the hemophiliac population is devastated. These families are already dealing with expensive, extremely expensive blood product on top of having the severe complications and medical problems that go along with AIDS and the, the expensive bills from that. So they are hit double. So far, the Coons family has been able to stay together, still able to get together for things like the children's high school concert. My biggest worry is will our family be able to stay together? Will we be able to stay intact? We are very family oriented and it's very much a part of our church. And that is one of my biggest fears is that we'll split up. I shouldn't be working. I really shouldn't be. But Carolyn Coons also knows that probably the only way she'll get to spend more time with her son is to stop working, get a divorce, and go on welfare. That's the way the system is set up for the families we've seen today. Carolyn Coons never got her wish to spend more time with her son. Michael died last week of complications from AIDS. Its roots reach back to royalty. Britain's Queen Victoria bestowed its curse on a dozen princes in four different countries. An inherited disease kept alive through generations. The curse of hemophilia. Hemophilia as a condition has been known for a long, long time. There's something in ancient Jewish law that said that if a woman had already lost two male sons through bleeding following circumcision, that future sons did not have to be circumcised. So they obviously recognized what the condition was, but of course they didn't know what to do about it. Today, we know hemophilia is caused by an inactive or inadequate supply of certain blood clotting proteins. Most often, it's hereditary, passed from mother to son. But in a third of all cases, there is no family history. Hemophilia can strike out of the blue. Hey, Jonathan, try to give me on bases. Just days after he was born, six-year-old Justin Glisson was diagnosed with hemophilia. There was no prior clue, no family history. His older brother was fine. His parents were not. It was, uh... I was shocked. 
and we knew nothing of hemophilia. You know, you'd heard of free bleeders, and I guess you always think like a lot of people did, you know, they bled to death or bled faster, or, which they, we have learned he didn't bleed any faster than anybody else. It just doesn't stop. There were bruises too numerous to count, black eyes, swollen joints. Elbow and knee pads helped protect Justin from toddler tumbles, but couldn't protect his parents from suspicion. Of course, he's, uh, ever since he's been born, he's been covered in bruises. And people in the stores just, you know, stare at you. And it, it really bothered us at first, because you know what's going through their mind. You know, the kids have been mistreated or something like that. Bubba carried his own. Come on, let's sit down and eat. And in some ways, Justin is lucky. He has the most common type of hemophilia, factor VIII deficiency, in its moderate form. Nearly five times as many patients have more severe disease. Justin's blood clotting ability will never get worse, yet he'll never get better. Is that all you want, three? The cuts have been the easiest. Because usually you can get a, a Band-Aid on long enough and enough pressure that a lot of times it will stop quicker than a, a bruise. A bruise will bleed till that muscle or that tissue around it is so full that it just, it'll look like it's going to pop. If I was trying to explain it, so you'd have to explain it like, you'd have to get a lot of shots and if you got hurt, you'd get bruised easy. 25 years ago, a boy like Justin would almost certainly have used crutches or a wheelchair. Joints became crippled from prolonged internal bleeds, and there were no answers. Early doctors tried everything from cod liver oil and gelatin to snake venom treatments for hemophilia. A century later, treatment was less radical, but equally ineffective. People with hemophilia would have to go to an emergency room, probably wait several hours, in order to get an infusion of blood, frequently whole blood, sometimes plasma. In the meantime, they would wait, they'd have a painful joint bleed or something like that. So it was very inconvenient, very inefficient. Many times they would just stay at home and suffer through the pain. These frozen bags stopped the suffering. By 1965, science had developed a way to separate the clotting protein hemophiliacs needed from the blood others donated. It was called cryoprecipitate. It could be administered at home, but it wasn't easy. Oh, it had to be frozen, so we had special freezers when we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. We had special freezers that we were given that, had, uh, that kept it at a certain temperature and had an alarm. So if our electricity went off, then the alarm sounded and we knew that this very precious product would be safe. By the mid-70s, coolers were obsolete. Clotting factor could now be freeze-dried like instant coffee. Blood protein from thousands of donors concentrated into a single powdery dose. Hemophiliacs had been set free. In the decade 1975 to 1985, unemployment among them dropped drastically. There was less time spent away from work and school, and the cost of medical care decreased by more than half. It couldn't be possible. Our lives had gotten so much better. We were in control of them, um, infusing at home. Um, as a matter of fact, our chapters didn't even meet on a regular basis anymore because uh, we didn't need each other the way that we had. And then all of a sudden, one day, we were told that the very drug that was saving our lives, that had given us this freedom, was now going to take our lives. Medical researchers are warning that a recently discovered disease found among homosexual men is also affecting non-homosexuals. Because the plasma is such an incredible amplifier when you put 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people's plasma into one pool, um, it doesn't take too many infected people to uh, infect an awful lot of other people. First reaction was, oh, this is really isolated. There are just a couple of cases. And they just kept emphasizing that we keep treating. Our hemophilia community still wasn't linking it to hemophilia and still wasn't linking it to the clotting factor that they had been taking to save their lives. Unfortunately, by the time they decided that we were at high risk, 90% uh, of the severe hemophiliacs were infected 
than at least 50% of the others. Including Wanda Johnson's son. She thinks he was probably infected by clotting factor shortly after he was born in 1977. An unusually bright boy, Larry pieced his problem together watching TV. While we were watching the show, he, he turned around and he just had a really shocked look on his face and he said, I can't get AIDS from my blood product, can I? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Larry died at the age of 11. His name added to a list of more than 1,500 others murdered by their own medicine. Well, if you're watching this, I, want you get, I guess you must know and must be dead. But I don't want you to be sad because I'm happy. Uh, I think some lives could have been saved if people had been given more choices and more options as to how to deal with what they were dealing with. And uh, no, I don't think uh, anyone has any idea how the hemophilia community has truly been devastated by all this. Ready? Yeah. Okay, here we People automatically a lot of times associate the AIDS with hemophilia. So I don't always tell everybody he has it. Okay, ready? Justin Glisson was born at the right time after changes in the manufacture of clotting factor made it much safer. I can tell you better. Are you ready? He still grits his teeth through it all, but experts say any risks from this medicine are quite small. There's even talk of a future cure. Yet despite slivers of light, an entire generation will be made to pay, for hemophilia has yet to see its darkest day. Bad parts of the world. Okay.